to be thankful. The first time I shared online, I reminded you of how in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, he always started with thanksgiving. The attitude of gratitude actually is being scientifically proved that people who are grateful are happier. So my question to you would be, are you grateful? Would you describe yourself as a grateful person or a grumpy person? <laughs> so let's have some honesty here. How many of you have more, if you, your cup is more grateful full than grumpy full? Let's have the gratefuls, gratefuls. Okay, well, everybody. Okay, how many grumpies have we got? Oh, lovely. Good. I'm glad that you're honest. So he starts by saying, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, all, for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So one of the things I have learned to be thankful for when I'm praying for the church is to thank God for the partnership we share in Christ. Let's say it together, please. The partnership we share in Christ. Young, middle-aged, whatever. Generationally, it doesn't matter. Racially, it doesn't matter. Gender, it doesn't matter. Church, organization, identities don't matter. In Christ, we're all in this together. Can I hear an amen to that? We're all in this together. What's your name, young man? Daniel. We're in this together. You have a part to play. Very valuable. We're all in this together. And can I encourage us, those of us who are not as young as we used to be, Let's encourage those who are younger and those who are less experienced. Sometimes it's not about age, it's about experience. I know people who are of age, but not experienced. And sometimes when you're not experienced, you can be intimidated by somebody who knows better. Can you all relate to what I'm saying? I mean, there are some very clever people in ICC, I know that. But I have sometimes been in a room when I've met people who are really clever. And sometimes I feel a bit intimidated by their degrees. But we all bring something to the table. Amen? So the Apostle Paul, knowing that, gives thanks for the Daniels, for the Mandys, for the Rods, my brother, what's your name, please? Adrian? Phil? Phil? You'll see. Ollie? Phil? Sandra? Debbie? Matt? Joan? Mom's name? Near Madra. And you're Gemma. We all bring something. To the table. I missed you there. Steve. Mary. Marian, yes. And Samuel. Samuel and Daniel, yes. Now we have a Samuel too. We all bring something to the table. And Shani, Paul, Sally. Did, didn't Sunny play well this morning? Yeah, and Kingsley, you did very well, honestly. That was so beautiful. But did you know that without the people at the back, what they were doing at the front will not be the same. 
I always remind our folks, it's the front team, the back team, the side team, everybody in it together. So who have I left out? I've got Kingsley, Jamie, Helen, Val, Ad Adi, Bumi, Derek. Derek, who's your helper there? Beloved. Oh, that's a lovely name. And uh, my friend, Pauline. Have I missed anybody? Oh, sorry, Daphne. Of course, you made me tea. You made me a cup of coffee. How could I forget you? And Richard, we are all in this together. So when the Apostle Paul is praying, he gives thanks for the partnership of the people. So I encourage you, when you are praying as a church, call people by name. Thank God for their contribution and the people on Zoom that I can't see. So those of you on Zoom that, can't, that can hear me or see me, we thank God for your partnership. We're all in this together. And it's not just I, I, ICC, it's IIC, Burlington Hope, um, Colchester Road Baptist, Redeemed, we're all in this together. It's the Church of England, the Baptist, we're all in this together. Are you with me, beloved? So he says, I give thanks for your lives. I give thanks. I give thanks. I'm, I'm quite intentional about thanking people personally. I thank people personally, privately, and publicly. And I want to publicly thank my wife. She has been with me through thick and thin. When I've been discouraged, she's stood by me, sometimes giving me some, wake up, get up. But if there's anyone that has faithfully prayed for me for the, over the years, I'm thankful to God. So please join me to thank my wife. The church will never function without everybody giving their best. Are you with me, Daniel? Give your best. We're all in this together. What happens sometimes is that people bring their B game or their C game to the party. They come and they sit as spectators and they criticize. I know you're not like that. You've never criticized, have you? Don't join the criticism the criticism party. Often, what you notice is your strength. What is absent is often what you bring. And when you don't bring your part, it is not the same. Am I making sense? Because God is smart, and he designed us different and gave us different gifts. Often, the, the bit you notice is the bit that maybe is your strength. Don't hold your strength back. So the Apostle Paul is very intentional. He says, I thank God for all of you. I thank God for all of you. I'm very grateful for your partnership in the gospel. And Lord, I just want to honor you publicly. I've known you for years. I, I've known about you for years before actually meeting you. And I just want to thank God. I know you're not finished, but I still want to say thank you. And I meant that, I meant that sincerely. You, Amanda, I just, I just want to honor you for your faithful service in this place, in this part of God's world over the decades. God sees your heart. He knows what you've plowed into the kingdom, and he will honor your good work. So let's appreciate them again. Don't wait till a person is dead, and then you say nice things. Say it whilst they're alive. If you've got something good to say to somebody, tell them whilst you have the opportunity. Because you may not get a chance to say it tomorrow. The pandemic, if anything at all, reminded us of the things we shouldn't take for granted. Can you relate to what I'm saying? The times we could easily get together that were taken away from us. The hugs we missed. And the people we, that, that really made a difference in our lives. 
I really want to encourage you. You all bring something. The youth work, the children's work, everybody. Bring your A game to the party. And don't leave anything behind. And you young people, I encourage you, don't discount yourself. Don't disqualify yourself. You are the church of today. You may be the leaders of tomorrow, but you're the church of now. And you even bring leadership today. And we welcome your wisdom. And uh, So the first thing is be thankful. If you don't have anything else to do, just be thankful. Father, I thank you. I'm thankful for, for what you're doing in the church, what you've been doing. Just be thankful. You can do that for 30 minutes. Some people just start off with a shopping list. That is not the, that's not a good way to pray. Be thankful. Father, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. I could, thank, I, I could go on giving thanks. And don't give thanks only when things are well. Because thankful people can thank God even when they are in a storm. We, give, we don't give thanks because all is well. We give thanks because it's the right thing to do. So, in the next point, in my next point, you see that Paul is encouraging the church. As he's praying, he's acknowledging something else. So, my second point is be expectant. So he, in his prayer, or he's expressing this by saying, he's confident that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. That is a good place to shout, amen. amen. Oh, I feel like jumping and shouting and saying, thank you, Jesus. He who has begun, hallelujah, a good work in you. He who has begun a good work in you, in you, in you, in you, in me, in you, child. He will definitely rain or shine summer or winter. He will accomplish it to the end. Give somebody a fist pump. Say amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. He who, he can be trusted. The one who has started the good work in ICC shall bring it to the end. So be confident. When we pray, we pray with confidence to God who can do all things, even in times of struggle. So we pray with expectation. When you don't pray with expectation and God answers, how would you know he's answered? In fact, why do we even pray if we have no expectation? Am I making sense? We pray because we have hope that something will change. And if it doesn't, we still are confident in a God who loves us. In Psalm 23, there are different seasons that the shepherd talks about. He talks about the green pastures of life, where life could not get better. It's like, it's amazing. But then he also talks about the valley of the shadow of death. And you might be in a, a green pasture season now, and I thank God for that. But you might be in a valley. You might be in a difficult place. And it might be a long season. And you maybe have been in a, a difficult season for a long time. And it's difficult to give thanks. It's difficult to praise. It's difficult to say, indeed, I'm joyful. But I came to encourage you today. He who has begun a good work in you will accomplish it. The word of the Lord to somebody today is, I'm holding your hand even when you can't see me. I don't know who is for today. The Lord will encourage you. He wants to encourage you. You will not fall. Even if you stumble, I'll hold you. You will not fall. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. You might be wobbly. You might be weak. You might be, you might be feeling defeated. But I came to encourage you today. He who has begun, the Lord is for you. He's not against you. He's rooting for you. He's your best friend. He's your greatest coach. He's your greatest champion. 
but nobody else is rooting for you, he's rooting for you. He's saying to you, you can do it. Adrian, is you Adrian? Yes, you can do it. You can do it. He's saying you can do it. You can. When you stumble, he says, I'm with you. I'll pick you up. Because when a righteous man falls seven times, the Lord picks him up. Wherever you are on your season, in your season, on your journey, the Lord is with you. He'll strengthen you. He's with ICC. You're not going to go under. You will not. You won't go under. You don't believe me? All right. You can say amen to that. Yes. <laughs> you won't go under. You won't. You will come through and be stronger. Because he who has begun a good work with ICC will bring it. He will continue. Because all of us are partnering with our A game with the Lord to make it happen. Are you with me? When we bring our A game to the table and we're all partnering, then we can confidently say, he who has begun a good work in us will bring it to an end. He will do it. Even when it's tough. And I don't deny that. And the third point is being honest. Okay. The passage for Ephesians, um, Philippians 1.6 is what I, I mentioned. So I'll go to my next point. Being honest. Being honest. So the Apostle Paul talks about different seasons. He's talking about being in chains. He says, it's right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. So my point here is be honest of the challenges and desires. It's okay to be honest with God and say, Lord, things are tough. Am I making sense? It's okay. It's okay to be honest. The Apostle Paul was honest. When you read a few verses later, he actually talks about being in chains. And sometimes the chains, the way I picture them, are, he was chained to, to a soldier that limited his movement. And whatever is limiting you today, whatever ch chains represent in your life, whatever is limiting your expression of happiness, of joy, I know they're not the same. Of your freedom, yes, Lord. Whatever hurts you may be carrying, hurts in life, disappointments in life, whatever disappointments you're carrying that are like chains, I came to encourage you, even with your chains, even with chains, you can still experience the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen? It's possible. The Apostle Paul does not deny that. So there are challenges. So you're praying for ICC and you're honest, Lord. We do have challenges, but that's okay. That's okay. In spite of our chains, we still choose to glorify you. We still choose to believe that you can cause good things to come out of a difficult situation. And that's a word of encouragement to somebody. The Lord is able to cause good to come out of the situation you're in right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. But he's believing it. And saying it. There's power in what you say. What do you often say? Do you, are, you, are you somebody who speaks more negative or more positive? Let's, be, let's have some honesty here. So let, how many are uh, the naturally optimistic? You, you're naturally optimistic. Yeah. Glass half, half full. Okay. All right. Let's go for glass half empty. Glass half empty. Pessimistic. Okay. All right. So the optimism is a bit higher than the pessimism. 
What was my point? What was I saying? We are honest about the challenges. And in the midst of our difficulty, we can still express our desires to God. There are times I went through a season where I really, really struggled. I went to services. I couldn't concentrate. Even when I was preaching, I couldn't concentrate. That's strange, isn't it? That you're preaching, but you're not in it. I'm just going through the motion. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about? That sometimes you're just going, you're on autopilot. You're not in it. But sometimes we do it because it's our role. You're not pretending. I don't come and stand before everybody and say, all is honky-dory. No, I don't do that. And it's not wise to come and spill the beans before everybody either. You have to have appropriate circles where you're honest. Am I, am I making sense? Where you can really say, I'm having a really, really bad day. Or I'm in a bad season of my life. Everybody needs a good friend. And sometimes in church, we can pretend. But the safest place is to be able to come and say, we're not great. The prayer I've always prayed for, I see, is that we'll be a safe place for people to be honest. It's not always wise for everybody to hear your story, but everybody needs somebody. When you ask me, how are you? They say, I'm fine. But you need somebody else. But when, you, when they ask you, how are you? Good, You're good, actually. You need somebody else that can honestly say, it's not great. It's not great. God can take honesty. The best you can do in prayer is to be honest. Say, Lord, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to believe. I'm actually disappointed. I'm struggling. He says, okay, that's all right. That's all right. Because God can deal with honesty. He likes honesty. He likes honesty. God likes honesty. May we have a culture that we can be honest. People describe me as very prayerful, but what they don't know that I do have my struggles. I don't want to be a pretender. In fact, I hate to be a pretender. But in my role, I have to lead. So there are times I lead because that's the role. But then there's, there's another space. I say, I need help. Pray for me. God deals with honesty. He's looking for honest places. It's in that honesty that you see the glory of God. Paul is saying, guys, it's not all great. I've got chains. It's not all great. But I still believe God. Um, Sonny and Cole would bear me out. I, I mean, I see we encourage people to, to really go for it and praise and worship. But I'm learning not to knock people who can praise. In the past, I used to say, come on, everybody, why can't you lift? No, I've stopped. Because you don't know what they're going through. The fact that they're present is a credit. Are you with me? Let's be patient with people. I'm less short with people because I think I... I get a bit better now. That you could even have a great season in the morning. And in the afternoon, you've had bad news. 
Honesty is what we need. So he teaches them, he models that. And the passage there, he talks about, and this is my prayer. Sorry, I missed the part. No, no, it's fine. I read the passage earlier. My last point as I round up. I read the passage. In fact, let's read it together, please. One, two, three, go. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Verse 11, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. Praise of God. So we've talked about number one, be thankful. Number two, be expectant. Number three, be honest. And my fourth point is be specific. So Paul is specific. He says, this is my prayer for you, that your love may abound. And that's just the prayer I pray. So when you gather this week, that's a good prayer to pray. Lord, we pray that our love may abound more and more. That's a good prayer. You could pray this all your life. Lord, help me to abound, to grow in my knowledge of you. That's a prayer you pray all your life. But you can be even more specific. He says so that you'll be able to discern what is best. Do you have a decision to make? We all have choices. The Holy Spirit is saying, I can help you in your very specific choices that you have. Very specific. There are times I don't know what to do. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. All of us can. I don't need to ask you because we all have choices in life. At times, as a, as a, as a father, as a husband, as a, as a leader, I'm at crossroads. As a person, I'm a son to my mom and I've got siblings. I've got friends. People come to me, ask me, what do you think? I say, I don't know. Holy Spirit, what do we do? Now, when we don't know, that's a good time to pray. So, Lord, I want to be able to know what the right choice to make. For my friends at school, what course to read, what job to take, who to be with, where to live. All of that. The future of ICC, all of that. He says, it's okay. I'll show you. I'll show you. You'll be able to discern what is best. And you may be pure and blameless. That is my prayer for you. That you, I'd like to go through all the names again, but I'll miss some of them. So I'll not do it. But that's how I'll pray. I pray for people by name. That you will get through this. That you will get through this. That you would, you'll be filled. You will be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. That's my prayer for you. If you pray this this week and continue to pray this, your joy, your cup of joy would increase because your desire is to live for the glory and praise of God. Sunny. And King said, would you come, please? I'm going to be rounding up. So, I don't know what's on your heart. What's on your heart? Thankfulness, expectancy, honesty, and being specific. Holy Spirit, if you need healing today in your emotions, 
If you're watching us online and you need the touch of Jesus right in your home, right in that living room, or if you're watching us later, may the touch of Jesus be very, very real to you. So even as you're seated and sunny just plays, I just want to pray the healing touch of Jesus over everyone here, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I pray the supernatural peace of God to rule and reign in your heart. And the confident expectation that God has got your life, his church, in his hands. I pray for your healing touch over every family, over every individual. You could just lift up your right hand, please, with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for Samuel. Thank you for the gift of leadership. Thank you. Thank you. If you're sick in your body, any part of your body, you can place your hand on there and I'll just pray for you very quickly, please. Holy Spirit, thank you for your touch. Thank you. If you're sick in your body, receive the touch of Jesus in your back, in your neck, in your hands, yes, in your emotions, anxiety. May the Lord heal you and minister his peace where you're anxious. Thank you for peace. Brother Mandy, peace. It is well. It is well. It is well. You will come together. God has got it sorted. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Thank you, God. Brother Adi and Sister Bobby, I just want to pray for you. I believe the Lord wants to encourage you. Don't be worried. I don't know what you're facing, but the Holy Spirit wants to encourage you. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. He's got your children covered. He's got your future covered. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because of time, I will stop if you like prayer at the end, I'll be more than happy to pray with you. Just one more. Somebody, you've got pain in your eye. I think it's your right eye. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your touch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.